So, some time ago, we did talk about the folks at Adobe coming up with a brand new tool that a lot of you guys may want to work with. Currently, this tool is available for designers and it is called Project New. Project New is a 3D based tool that allows you to create interesting 3D graphics and the mode of creation is very sign distance field related. So, we've already covered a couple of videos about how you can work with sign distance field apps and a couple of apps that also support this. And of course, if you simply go over to the link in the description, this is going to bring you right here where you can see this. So, all you need to do to get started is simply come through get started signing and you will be able to start designing designing with this is super easy as you can make a couple of interesting stuff you can also go ahead and make some very interesting ones like this and all of these are extremely easy to create 3d stuff and before we get into how you can start fiddling with some of these things let's talk about the ui and see how you can get started to get started is extremely simple as all you need to do is once you launch the website you can click on start designing and this is going to bring you over to the discover page where you can see some featured content and some community based content now if you'd like to start designing all you need to do is click on create a new design and this is going to load you into the ui now once the ui gets loaded you would notice that right here we have the tools that you can work with we've got the rendering options from here and we've got a couple of properties very typical like every other 3d tool that you work with something else which i would like to also mention is most of the times you get some very interesting names for your project so at this point you cannot necessarily change the name of the project as it just gives you a particular name and you've just got around with it the viewport is just one gigantic viewport which is what we have here and how you manipulate this is very simple so you can roll in the mouse to zoom in and zoom out and the right mouse button is for orbiting by default this is going to set your viewport to parallel but if you like to set this to isometric or maybe you like to set it to perspective, you can do that. Now, one thing you might also fall victim to most of the times once you get started is once you have anything selected, you probably not have access to the viewport settings because the properties just simply switches to whatever object you have selected. And if you like to get access to the viewport settings, the scene settings, simply click out, make sure you have nothing selected and you would have that right here is where you get to see whatever tool that you have on your viewport at the point and this brings us to a couple of tool sets that they have i'm just simply going to go ahead and turn this off and let's go ahead and take out this frame because we don't want that at this point so if you want to bring in any of these objects all you need to do is click and click so this is no click and drag you just have to click and then click on the viewport and this automatically comes in you've got a couple of gizmos and also handles that you can use to either make objects smooth or you can use it to make these objects sharp another thing you might also notice is this object selected or any object at all let's go ahead and grab a few more so once you have any object if you look at the properties section, your properties include color, object, and shape. These are individual properties that you can have access to, but just like you have with Unreal Engine and every other tool, if you like to have access to all of them, you need to click on all and all of them will be listed out. So for the color, this is where you have to do, you know, the color stuff. If you like to make it reflective, metallic, you do all of that stuff. And within the objects section, Let's just go ahead and get rid of these. You've got a section for repeat, which you can use to repeat object as grid. So if you like to repeat this as a grid, you can. If you like to repeat your object radially, you can as well. Now within the shape section is where things get pretty interesting, especially for some complicated meshes. So by default, if you like to blend, because this is using a sign distance field mode of making your models. So if you like to blend, you can simply click on the blending and this starts blending with the objects that are either underneath all the objects that are way on top so we can blend and you can see we can start making some stuff like that so we can do that and of course i can move these around if we want if we also think about making some curve probably like to carve things in yes of course we can we can also do some intersections as well we can also do some color combination as well so whatever color that we have so if we go in here and change the color to say red for example automatically that becomes the color that is distributed right down there. So you can use this to sort of color your designs without the object being rendered. And one good example is with this model called engineer. So right here, you can see that we've got a little bit of a red tint, which is over here. So if we actually move this, you can see we don't have that color there. And if we drag this right in, you can see that. So like I mentioned earlier, this actually allows you color your objects without rendering those objects. And this is actually one of those good ways that you can use to texture your models if you're creating with Project Neo. So back here, we can also do a few more things. So let's simply just go back and take everything off. Most objects do have holes, so it means you can 
throw in some holes on them if you want and because you've got those holes you can also play with corners and actually add corners to this but in this case i'm just going to turn this off so the bottom corner you can use this to sort of curve or bevel the bottom of your model the same thing can happen with the top right here you've also got like inside shell which if we have an object that has a hollow inside we can also do that and we do have the inflate so all these are things that you can literally use to do some very pretty cool stuff some other things which I have to show you guys has to do with this layered section, which looks more like an outliner. At this point, you would also notice that we can move objects up and down. And depending on how you move this object, that is how whatever Boolean operation you're doing, which has to do with the combine, would work. So I'm just going to bring this down and you can notice that we've got this plane, which is down here and it is affecting this piece. So if we move this upwards, you would notice it doesn't. Now, this plane would only affect whatever that is right on top of it. And that is just one of those things I believe would make sense, especially if you guys are trying to work with this later on in the future. And if we also go in and bring in an object like this, you can choose to reorient where you like this object to be, depending on what you're trying to make out of it. So in this case, once we have this object here, if I choose to do some blending, you would notice that it blends in with the feet because this is right above it if we simply move this all the way down you would notice that that blending doesn't work so just in case you're thinking about doing that blending feature or maybe you like to use this this is basically how you get on with it and use it for some very cool stuff another thing which i think might make a little bit of a sense is the edit section probably like to edit the beveled edges or maybe you like to edit certain parts, you can simply go ahead and select those parts and actually edit them however you choose or make them softer depending on what you're trying to get. And of course, if you like to hide or review stuff, you can. So you can also go in and hide these parts. Say you like to hide that. You can also choose to frame that if you want to duplicate this, if you want to, if you like to paste material or probably transfer material, you can of course go ahead and do that as well. And this is exactly the same technique that's been used in creating everything, including stuff like this, which looks pretty cool. And like I mentioned earlier, if you want to make changes to the material, of course you can, you can definitely go in and make changes. Probably you like to make your object reflective and so on. Then of course you can simply go ahead and do that. And that is basically the gist of it. Every other thing just requires you to take your time to sort of make the model you want. So like in cases like this, where we're trying to make a very interesting beer, all we have to do is just play with a couple of shapes. Then you can also proceed to play with color. Now, depending on what you're trying to make, you can simply switch back and forth and do some stuff. There's also this very interesting feature that they have, which has to do with mirroring. Of course, we didn't really play with the mirror that much until later on in the project where we did find out that okay maybe the mirror definitely makes sense and we're going to go ahead and use it but in your case i would definitely suggest that once you're starting out just like every other tool start out from the center so the mirror actually works because if you try to do the mirroring a little bit far from the center this mirroring will probably not work so for the beer, we just simply went ahead, banged out a couple of shapes and used them to create what we have here as our final piece. And then what we did next is just simply go in and also play with more shapes to sort of create that tree looking effect. And then we did a couple more blending for, you know, the shapes that actually exist underneath the beer just to give that effect that we're looking for. And with that, this is what we have here. All that is left is setting out how you like to render your model. So if we're thinking about rendering this, what we can do is simply go back to where we have our scene and then we can set the view how we want it to be. And if you did notice, we changed the background to become linear. So they do have a gradient thing here. So by default, this is set to solid, but then we went ahead to set it to linear, which means you can change the background to get the desired result of what you're going for. Now, something else you might have noticed is every single time you click on an object, your camera moves to that object. And that is because your camera has been set to autofocus. So in this case, if I click on the ear of the beer, you see that happens. If I click here, it goes there. If you don't want that, you can simply turn this off. Right over here, you can also choose to play with the lighting. So you like to change the rotation of your lighting. You can do that, raise the height, bring that down. You like to change the rendering type, and this is really going to be useful if you're into pixel art rendering. So if we like to change this from the realistic to pixel art, 
we can and we do have a pixel ads count which hits up to 256 and you can also throw in a pixel filter and also a pixel outliner so depending on what you're trying to get of course you can let's see if we can get this to 512 nope that doesn't work and finally for this styles we do have the expressive so with the expressive you can increase the thickness and also bring that down again depending on what you're trying to make these are ways that you can express your rendering in your viewport and speaking about rendering you have to select the dimension that you want if you like to show the floor of course you can but if you don't want to show the floor you can totally take that off we've also got this very interesting parameter section here which deals with a focal length so we can play with the focal length in this case i'm just going to set this to probably 50 and then what we could do is play with the aperture as well so for this aperture i'm just going to do that and what this would do is it's just going to help us with the focus. So I'm also going to play with the focal plane right in the face of the model. So something like that. I guess the aperture is a bit too much. So we can also bring that right about that much. So we do have a good number of blow happening in the background. And if you like to add some distortion, of course you can. You can choose to distort this forward, but you can't distort this backward. And uh, that is one of those things. Now, for my feedback, I do think this looks very similar to what we have with Spline 3D and also Womp. These are tools that I've tested on the channel before. Now, the big difference with this, which is currently in beta, and those ones is with this one, you cannot by any chance download these as 3D models. Just in case you've been wondering, oh, once we're done, can we download this? No, you cannot. All you can do is click on the download button and you can get a PNG, a JPEG, and an SVG. Anything that has to do with 3D doesn't exist for this one, at least now. Probably once this comes out of beta, we should be able to download it and use this for anything that we want. So this is it. For those who like to take a look at this, links to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.